So this is uh, lecture number 12 uh, of this course on analog MOS circuit design. Uh, so in the last few lectures, uh, we have been talking about uh, the common source amplifier. And uh, in this particular discussion, we have also considered the different types of loads. A simple resistive load or a current source kind of load. And we have also considered diode connected load. Now, if I just uh, once again uh, consider the most simple architecture of a common source amplifier, uh, as you know, it looks something like that. We have an NMOS device like this and uh, a resistive load, a discrete register like this, along with some bias voltage and the small signal where the source is uh, connected to ground. Let it be V1, let we have a V in over here, small signal, output is taken from this terminal, this is the drain supply and the resistance Rd over here. So uh, you know the expression for the voltage gain, we have already calculated the expression for the voltage gain is something like minus Gm times Rd parallel R0. If I consider uh, the channel length modulation into our account, then this R0 will be there. Otherwise, you can simply write like minus Gm times Rd. So uh, what I find ultimately the voltage gain if he is a function of GM that is the transconductance of the MOS device. Now even if we consider that the resistance value RT is fixed or even if we represent this resistance by means of some current source load or diode connected load, there also you will find that uh, we cannot get rid of this GM that is the mutual conductance or the transconductance of the MOS device. And in fact, uh, the, uh, already we have seen the different expressions for the transconductance and one such expression is something like that which is given by square root of twice id mu n c ox w over l. This is one of the expressions that we have considered so far. Now so far we have assumed that uh, the transconductance is fixed. Now what happens uh, if the temperature changes uh, for a particular architecture? So you know that uh, in this particular expression of GM, uh, we have the dependence of several parameters. Like uh, GM depends on the mobility of the electrons, it depends on the oxide capacitance, it also depends upon the dimension of the device and as well as the drain current, the bias current ID. Now if the temperature changes then what happens if the temperature increases for example if the temperature increases then obviously the mobility of the electrons will go on decreasing and as a matter of fact the value of gm will also drop down similarly if uh, we move from the one technology to the other technology if this w by l ratio changes or even if the oxide capacitance per unit area if that particular thing changes then obviously uh, the value of GM will be modified. Moreover, the value of ID as you know, if we consider a different uh, bias voltage over here, instead of having V1, if uh, it is like V2 or something other than that, then what happens is the corresponding bias current, the drain current will also change and accordingly the value of this transconductance will also be modified. And moreover, uh, we have seen that uh, this expression for GM, uh, how to calculate the expression for GM or what was the mechanism. Uh, perhaps you can remember, uh, we have started with the uh, ID versus VGS characteristics curve like this. ID versus VGS and how to calculate it. You know that up to VTH, up to one threshold, you don't have, uh, up to one threshold, you don't have uh, any current flow. So up to this threshold there is no change. This is VTH and after that uh, there will be an increase in parabolic form. And accordingly we have calculated uh, the expression for this uh, transconductance by uh, finding out the derivative of this ID with respect to VGS. So it was something like that del ID upon del VGS. Now if I consider this is my bias value V0 or V1 in this particular case, then obviously 
uh, if we calculate the slope at this particular point, you'll be getting the value of gm. Now, if the signal level, if the variation of this input signal is much more with respect to this uh, DC value, that means if I consider that the uh, small signal notion is not valid, then obviously the slope at this point, let me consider the variation is something like that. Uh, let me assume the variation of uh, this VGS is little bit large, not as small as we thought previously. Suppose this is the variation. So if you calculate the slope over here and if you calculate the slope over here, these two slopes are not same. And you know that the value of this transconductance, it also varies with the overdrive voltage. So if the overdrive voltage is large, then obviously the slope will be large. So here the slope is small at this particular point and here the slope will be large. So the bottom line is that uh, the value of the transconductance that we have considered so far, so that GM was not constant. So it depends upon several parameters. It depends upon the temperature. It depends upon the technology um, in the process. It depends upon the supply voltage to some extent because uh, it is a function of the supply voltage. And as well, it depends upon the signal fluctuation. I mean, this input signal V in. So uh, if the value of this uh, voltage gain is a direct function of GM like this, then obviously what happens, uh, whatever be the uh, amplifier we design, so the corresponding gain of the amplifier will not be a stable one. So suppose you have designed an amplifier like this and uh, it is giving you a gain of say 100 or 200. But if you operate the same device, the same circuit at some other temperature or with a different bias voltage, with a different VDD, with a different V1 or with a different fluctuation of V in, uh, then you don't get the same value of the voltage gain. So in a nutshell, uh, the gain of that particular circuit is no longer stable. So it depends upon several parameters. So uh, the people have thought that uh, there is some necessity to reconstruct the circuit in such a way uh, that the voltage gain is less sensitive to the value of the transconductance or the mutual conductance. So uh, this particular circuit has been modified to some extent and uh, it looks something like that. So let me just show you the modified circuit. How does it look like? A same common source type of uh, circuit because we are applying the input signal at the gate. So what we have, we have an NMOS device with three terminals identified like this, gate source and the drain. And uh, uh, we have uh, provided some bias voltage between the gate and the ground. And this small signal uh, V in is there in series with that. So let me call this is my V1. The bias voltage which is needed to make the device turn on. And this is the input signal V in. And we have some explicit uh, register over here between the drain and the VDD, the supply line. Or you can also substitute this register by means of a current source kind of load or a diet connected load. Now, in case of a simple common source type of amplification stage, what you have uh, with this particular source terminal was directly connected to ground, DC ground. But this time, uh, in this modified circuit, this is not directly connected to the ground, rather it is connected to the ground through a resistance. And this resistance uh, is a source resistance RS. And once again, we are taking the output from this particular terminal V out. And this particular configuration is known as a common source stage, common source stage with degeneration. So this is called a common source stage with degeneration. Now, first of all, we have to analyze the circuit. What will be the DC voltage? this uh, drain voltage, what will be the DC drain current and as well as we have to find out the small signal voltage gain for this particular circuit and what advantage we are getting out of this. Now first of all, uh, it is very uh, obvious that uh, if we just uh, simply uh, analyze the, the DC, uh, uh, DC calculation, if we do that, then obviously this small signal variation uh, will be inactive and we do have only this uh, battery connected between the gate and the ground. For the DC calculation, for the bias calculation, what you need to do is that, so for the bias calculation, 
what we have. So if you just analyze this uh, input side, what we have, we have uh, this battery uh, V1 which is connected between the gate and the ground because for DC calculation or for the bias calculation, this is considered to be inactive, this small signal V in. So uh, what you have this V1 that is equal to, we have a gate to source uh, voltage difference, so that is VGS. And previously, uh, since uh, we don't have any resistance connected between the source and the ground in the last example, so in that particular case, uh, V1 is equal to VGS. But this time, uh, V1 is not equal to VGS because uh, the source is connected with some resistor and obviously, uh, a current will flow through this and this current, as you know, this current is same as the drain current. So if I mark this DC drain current by ID, so the same drain current will also flow through this that is id so we can write v1 is equal to vgs plus id times rs so this is one expression so you have two unknown uh, you don't know what about the vgs what about the gate source dc voltage and what about the drain current the dc drain current so we have uh, this condition uh, v1 is equal to vgs plus id times rs now, if I assume that uh, the device operates in the uh, saturation region, so in saturation, you know the relationship between ID and VGS. So in saturation, uh, we know the relationship between ID and VGS, which is equal to ID is equal to half mu n C ox W over L into VGS minus Vt square. So that is the expression for the drain current with uh, the gate to source voltage in the saturation region. Now here uh, we have just neglected the channel length modulation. Now if you would like to incorporate channel length modulation, then 1 plus lambda VTS term will be there. In addition to this, uh, half mu and Cox W over L VGS minus VT square. So now we have two equations. So this is one equation. Let me call this equation number 1 and let me call this is equation number 2. So what are the known quantities? You know V1, you know the bias voltage, this V1 you know. You know the source register RS, you know the resistance value, uh, you know the mobility, you know these uh, parameters like C ox, W over L, you know the threshold voltage as well. So two unknowns, one is VGS, the gate source voltage, second one is ID, that is the drain current. So you have two unknowns and two equations. So obviously uh, you can calculate uh, the value of this ID and VGS from these two equations. Now, uh, in this particular case, we have assumed that the device is in saturation. So we have to ensure that whether the device is in saturation or not. And in order to do that, you know the condition. The condition is that the drain source voltage should be greater than the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage. So that is the condition for the MOS device to be in saturation. So the drain source voltage should be greater than the gate source voltage minus a threshold voltage. Or this is simplified, this can be simplified to be Vd should be greater than Vg minus Vth, right? So what about the drain voltage over here? So the uh, Vd is nothing but the drain potential. So what is that? So this is nothing but the this particular thing, V out. So how to uh, mark it or how to find it out? V out. So this is nothing but Vdd minus Id times Rd. So that is all about the drain potential and that should be greater than the gate potential. So what is the potential connected at the gate terminal? This is nothing but V1. So V1 minus Vth. Now if this condition gets satisfied, so accordingly you have to select uh, the value of Rd and V1 uh, so that this condition gets satisfied. That, that means Vdd uh, must be greater than V1 plus Idrd minus Vth or this particular condition must hold good so that the device is in saturation. And uh, as you know, uh, we have to operate the device in saturation so that we can have the maximum gain out of it. Okay, so this is all about the DC calculation of the bias calculation. And now we, we are in a position to draw the small signal equivalent circuit for this particular model. So as you know, uh, in order to draw the small signal equivalent circuit, uh, what you need to do is that uh, first of all, you have to model the MOS so this is a three terminal device. So you need to mark the three terminals, gate, source and drain. So these are the three terminals 
and between get to source so let me call this is my get terminal this is the drain terminal and this one is a source terminal so between get to source let the let me call this voltage to be say v1 between these two so v1 is the get source voltage difference and between drain to source uh, you must be having a dependent current source voltage dependent current source whose magnitude is given by gm times v1 so this completes the modeling of the device mos itself we have neglected the channel modulation if not we have to connect one resistor between drain and source whose value is equal to r not what else is there you know that uh, source is not grounded rather uh, it is connected to ground through a resistance rs so obviously uh, you should have a resistor rs over here and this is ac ground so this one is rs and what about rd rd is connected between the drain terminal to vdd and in the small signal equivalent model this vdd is nothing but ac ground so uh, what you need to do is that uh, we cannot connect it from drain to source rather we have to connect this rd between drain to ac ground like this so this one is rd and from this terminal we are supposed to get the output voltage now what about the input side in the input side this v1 will be absent because as you know in the small signal equivalent circuit the dc battery will be replaced by simple short circuited so that is uh, absent in the small signal model uh, what else we have we have this v in which is connected between the gate and the ground just like this so this one is v in now we need to find out the expression uh, v out upon v in for this particular circuit so we need to analyze this circuit accordingly so now uh, if you uh, closely uh, look into this circuit so this voltage equal to v out and uh, the resistance is rd so uh, you understand what about the current which is flowing through this terminal uh, so the current which is flowing through this terminal is nothing but v out upon rd so this will be the current v out upon rd so this current flows through this and what we have if we just apply kcl at this particular node so if v out upon rd flows through this terminal so obviously minus v out by rd current will flow through this or in other words you can say that gm times v1 is nothing but minus v out by rd so this is same current is flowing through this resistance rs which is equal to gm v1 or minus v out times rd so now uh, if this current is equal to minus v out by rd or gm times v1 now you can uh, equate this v in with the summation of these two voltage so as you know v in is given by if we just simply apply kvl so this is nothing but v1 plus the voltage drop across this particular resistor which is nothing but minus v out times rd into rs and we know that gm v1 is equal to minus v out by rd so from that you know v1 can be written like minus v out divided by gm times rd so now uh, if we uh, move to the next slide v is equal to v1 minus this so let me write v in so the expression was something like that v in is equal to v1 and you have minus v out upon rd into rs and v1 is given by minus v out upon gm times rd so now this can be substituted over here minus v out upon gm times rd 
and then you have minus v out by rd multiplied with rs so if you take uh, v out by rd outside you are left with 1 by gm plus rs and that is equal to v in so which implies AV that is the voltage gain is given by V out upon V in that is equal to V out upon V in means you have a minus sign RD divided by 1 by GM plus RS. Now uh, for a common source amplifier with uh, no source degeneration which we have considered in the last day we have the expression like uh, minus GM times RD as the expression for the voltage gain. Now uh, that is also intuitively satisfying from this particular expression. I mean if you just uh, place Rs is equal to 0 then uh, you have got like AV the voltage gain is given by minus Gm times Rd. If not uh, then the voltage gain is given by minus Rd divided by 1 by Gm plus Rs. So the voltage gain uh, can be also written like so this is minus then you have so what is Rd? Rd is nothing but the resistance which is connected between so if you once again go back over here, so what about RD? RD is nothing but the resistance that is connected between the drain terminal to the AC ground. So in generic term, what you can write it like this. Uh, okay, so uh, this is like minus the resistance tied between drain and AC ground that is RD then you have 1 by GM that is fine plus RS so what is RS? RS is nothing but the resistance which is connected between the source and the AC ground so you can write this like resistance tied between source and AC ground. So this is a generic expression for the voltage gain of a common source amplifier with source degeneration. So instead of having a single resistance over here, if you have another resistor, suppose uh, apart from having this simple resistor RT, suppose you are having an additional resistor in the form of a diode connected load. Then uh, you know that for, for a diode connected load, the equivalent resistance is given by 1 upon GM parallel combination with R0. So that is the equivalent resistance for a diode connected load. So if you have two resistor, one uh, discrete resistor like this RD and another resistor in the form of a diode connected load, then without going into the detailed analysis or small signal analysis, you can simply know what about the expression for the voltage gain. So you know that the expression of the voltage gain is nothing but minus an outside. In the numerator, you have a resistor tied between the drain and the AC ground. So that resistor will be simply Rd and you have another resistance like 1 by Gm parallel R0 of that device divided by 1 by Gm of this amplifying device plus the resistance tied between the source and the ground. So this is a much more generic expression for the voltage gain. So the uh, next question is that uh, whether uh, this particular expression whether this is helpful uh, for the problem which you have considered at the beginning of this lecture. So uh, let me just uh, explain uh, this particular, let me take a different color, okay. Let me just explain uh, whether we can address the problem which we have considered at the very beginning of uh, today's discussion. Finally, what we got is uh, AV is given by minus Rd upon 1 by Gm plus Rs. So that can be also written like minus Gm times Rd divided by 1 plus Gm times Rs. So now you see Gm, the expression, I mean the value of Gm is there in the numerator as well as denominator. So last time uh, for uh, with without degeneration, so without degeneration, so if I call like 
without degeneration wt that was like minus gm times rt and av with degeneration that is given by minus gm times rt divided by 1 plus gm times rs so last time if the value of gm changes by 10% suppose we have some uh, standard value for this transconductance and suppose gm changes for any means uh, by 10% then the expression of the voltage gain i mean the value of av will also increase by 10% or decrease by 10% depending upon the variation of gm but this time what we have we have gm in the numerator as well as in the denominator so if the gm changes by 10% then the corresponding change in the expression of the voltage gain is much more limited it cannot be 10% might be say 1% or so so the variation can be limited to certain extent and moreover uh, if uh, we assume that uh, under this assumption that rs if the value of rs is much much greater as compared to 1 upon gm uh, if this assumption is true uh, then what we find is uh, the expression of av is uh, simply given by minus rd by rs in which case you have no dependence on gm now that condition is true if and only if the value of rs is very very large with respect to 1 upon gm if not then this assumption is not correct and under this assumption you find that the expression of the voltage gain is given by the ratio of two register that is rd and rs now if the value of rs is much much large then obviously the value of av will be reduced now hopefully uh, you can find some resemblance with this circuit and the circuit that we have discussed in our electronic circuits module now whenever we have considered a simple common emitter amplifier with an emitter register and without an emitter register now without an emitter register perhaps you can remember for a, a bjt amplifier if you don't have some explicit emitter register connected between the emitter terminal and the ground terminal uh, perhaps you can remember the expression of the voltage gain was something like minus gm times rc right and if we connect the register now the same problem was also there uh, minus gm times rc so uh, gm was there the transconductance was there and uh, if the transconductance varies because you know uh, that was a function of the temperature gm was given by ic by vt where vt is the thermal voltage which is a strong function of temperature so as you know uh, this minus gm rc was a function of temperature it's a strong function of temperature so uh, the expression of the voltage gain that we got was not at all stable on the other hand uh, if we connect a register between the emitter terminal and the ground terminal uh, then uh, the expression of the voltage gain was reduced to minus rc upon rd so the corresponding gain is much more stable because now it is nothing but the ratio of two register like rc and rd uh, but at the cost of what but at the cost of reduced voltage gain so now we have to Uh, different uh, conditions in one case you find that the expression of the voltage gain or the value of the voltage gain is large enough but the voltage gain is not at all stable that is the scenario with the common source amplifier without source degeneration where the source is directly connected to ground so the gain was large but it was not stable on the other hand if i just consider this circuit uh, common source amplifier with a degenerated resistance which is connected between the source terminal and the ground terminal in which case uh, you have seen that uh, this is nothing but minus rd by rs so here the expression of the voltage gain is much much less because value of rs is much much larger as compared to 1 upon gm so the voltage gain is reduced but uh, you have got a much more stable gain so ultimately as a circuit designer you have to make a trade off between these two conditions now before i uh, go into the qualitative analysis now let me just uh, give you some let me just change the color and let me just consider circuit like this and uh, i'd ask you to how to find out the uh, expression for the voltage gain for this circuit so this is nothing but a lemma of what we have discussed so far suppose uh, we have got a circuit like this now instead of uh, considering the small signal model we can directly find out the expression for the voltage gain suppose it is something like that you have a resistance like this okay 
okay let me let me just consider two different cases let me just consider or uh, let me do one thing let me make the circuit much more complicated and uh, uh, complete the analysis accordingly so suppose uh, now you don't have some explicit register rather uh, you have some diode connected load something like this you have some diode connected load like this a gate and drain shorted together like this similarly you have another device so these two registers are d and rs so they are now replaced by the corresponding diode connected load and suppose uh, we have some battery for the biasing and the input is applied in series like this suppose this is the complicated or com compound circuit which looks something like that this is the input voltage v in and we are supposed to take the output from this terminal v out this is the drain supply vdd uh, let me mark uh, this is the mos 1 this is mos 2 this is mos 3 so as you know uh, this mos 1 is acting as an amplifying device here and m2 is playing the role of a drain register and m3 is playing the role of a source register so instead of having explicit register discrete register what you have all the registers are being replaced or they are represented by means of MOS devices and which is normally done practically this is done now if this complicated circuit is given to you and if you are asked to find out what will be the voltage gain then a straightforward approach will be you just uh, draw the small signal equivalent model and go on uh, finding out the corresponding expression for the voltage gain alternatively what you can do is uh, you can just uh, visualize this uh, MOS2 in isolation that it's a device a two terminal device for which the gate and drain are shorted together so it is nothing but a diode connected load and you know that for a diode connected load the corresponding value of the resistance r2 if i call so this r2 is nothing but 1 upon gm2 in parallel so i should not write r2 rather i should use the term like rd so this time it is rd so this rd is nothing but here 1 upon gm2 parallel ro2 similarly rs the expression for rs here is nothing but 1 upon gm3 parallel ro3 so ro2 and ro3 are the corresponding output resistance of those two different mos devices so now if you are asked to find out the expression of the voltage gain so in one line you can do it so as you know this is nothing but minus the register connected between the drain terminal and the AC ground so uh, this is simply 1 upon gm2 parallel ro2 divided by 1 upon gm and that gm corresponds to the gm of the amplifying device that is m1 so i should write 1 upon gm1 plus the resistance connected between the source of the amplifying device and the ground ac ground so what is that this is the rs so 1 upon gm3 parallel ro3 so in one line you can write down the expression without going into the small signal model so sometimes it might help to calculate the expression for the voltage gain so uh, mathematically we have uh, proved that uh, this kind of uh, common source amplifier with source degeneration uh, helps uh, in uh, making the circuit much more stable but at the same time we are interested uh, in showing you uh, how to analyze the circuit in a qualitative manner uh, so that uh, we can prove our statement so uh, let me just uh, once again uh, consider the same circuit let me now consider two different circuits in fact one circuit is without uh, source degeneration and the other circuit is with source degeneration so let me just uh, draw the circuits side by side and for the illustration i am just considering a discrete register like rd so this is the circuit 
without source degeneration what we have considered so far in our discussion and we are applying the input here now for the illustration i am just uh, i am not considering the bias voltage assuming that it is there otherwise the circuit might not operate and for the second circuit it looks something like that now you have some explicit register rs connected between the source and the ground and the input signal is applied between the gate and the ground so this is rd this one is rs vdd and this one is free out so this circuit is without source degeneration the first one and the second circuit is with source degeneration now suppose uh, let me consider uh, that uh, the input signal uh, vn is having a variation abroad variation and suppose the variation is uh, like uh, let this rise is by delta v suppose the input signal here for the first circuit increases in step by an amount of delta v so as a matter of fact if v in becomes v in plus delta v for this circuit for the first circuit what happens the corresponding gate to source voltage will also increase by delta v because the source is directly connected to ground so if the gate voltage increases by an amount of delta v the gate to source voltage will also increase by the same amount then what about the current we have certain current flowing through this so this current let me let me call okay let me call this is circuit 1 and let me call circuit 2 so id1 v in 1 this one is v in 2 rd1 rd2 rs2 like this so what happens if v in 1 increases by delta v then vgs1 will also increase by delta v and what about the current id1 so this current id1 will also increase by gm1 times delta v and accordingly when this current flows through the resistance rd you have a more drop across the resistance and this value is constant vdd so the output voltage will also reduce accordingly so the circuit is not at all stable as we have discussed so far so if the gate voltage increases by some amount the corresponding change is directly reflected in the gate to source voltage and ultimately translated into the corresponding change in the drain current and which also make a direct impact to the output voltage now what happens for the circuit to second circuit so let us try to analyze the phenomenon in a qualitative manner now if the gate voltage here also let me consider that the gate voltage this v in 2 uh, increases by the same amount delta v what will be the corresponding change in the gate to source voltage will it be constant or will it also change accordingly now right at this moment let, let me make some assumption and let us let us check whether this assumption is correct or not so for the time being let us assume that okay this potential is constant this potential is fixed i mean the source potential is fixed so assume let me assume even if the gate voltage increases by some delta v let me assume that the source voltage vs2 is fixed is constant last time it was obviously constant because it was connected to ground so this potential is always zero volt now this time let me assume that this vs2 is constant so then i have to check whether this assumption is correct or not now if this assumption is correct then what happens so what about vs2 this is nothing but the the voltage across is rs2 so the voltage across rs2 is constant implication is that it implies if that assumption is correct then it implies that the current id2 is equal to constant because vs2 is nothing but id2 times rs2 now if i d is constant now if now if you just uh, once again come back to the main circuit you will find that 
the gate voltage has been increased by some amount and the source voltage is constant and if this assumption is correct then it also implies that VGS2 will also increase by delta V because gate voltage has been increased by delta V and we are assuming that the source voltage is held at a constant value. So if this is true then VGS2 will also increase by same amount. Now if you compare these two, now if you compare these two, VGS2 has been increased by delta V and I2 2 is remaining constant. That means ID2 is remaining at ID2. These two statements are contradictory to each other. Because if the gate source voltage increases by some amount, then the current ID2 cannot be constant. So that assumption was wrong, what we have made initially that VS2 is equal to constant. So what happens if the gate voltage increases by some delta V, then the source voltage will also increase by some amount. So the source voltage VS2 will also increase. We don't know what about the amount, but it will increase certainly because the current will increase through this resistance. If you increase the gate potential over here, the current will increase. So the since the resistance value is constant, so VS2 will also increase. Then what about VGS2? So I don't know what about the magnitude. Suppose it increases say by delta V dash. So VG2 becomes Vg2 plus delta V and Vs2 becomes previous Vs2 plus delta V dashed. So which implies the gate source voltage difference Vgs2 will increase not by delta V rather by delta V minus delta V dash. Assuming that the corresponding increase across this resistance or at the source terminal is less as compared to delta V. So delta V minus delta V dash. So here if delta if the input voltage increases by delta V uh, then uh, the corresponding gate source voltage will not increase by delta V rather it will increase by delta V minus delta V dash. And now you know under this condition the corresponding current ID2 will increase not by GM2 times delta V but by gm2 times delta v minus delta v dash. So because of the presence of this resistance over here, because of this resistance rs over here, rs2 over here, the corresponding change in the gate voltage or the corresponding change in input voltage is not directly reflected to the drain current. Rather, the corresponding change in the drain current is somehow reduced. The corresponding increase is not by gm2 times delta v but by gm2 times delta v minus delta v dash and this happens because of the appearance because of the presence of this resistance rs2. So in other words we can also say that this resistance rs2 is somehow weakening the amplification process to some extent so that the gain is becoming much more stable. So qualitatively we can say that uh, the gain is much more stable for this circuit with uh, source degeneration as compared to the circuit without source degeneration. And mathematically we have already uh, proven this thing uh, that the expression of the voltage gain is much more stable for the common source amplifier circuit with source degeneration. Uh, so uh, our time is uh, almost up. So uh, I would like to uh, conclude this discussion.